Let's hear some music. And that's the sound once again of the uh, Portland Youth uh, Philharmonic. They're celebrating their 95th season this year. And get this, they will soon be the first U.S. organization for young musicians to reach their 100th anniversary. How about that? Uh, they played for us earlier. We're going to hear the, the string quartet live in studio here in just a couple more minutes. Joining us on the couch is their musical director, David Hatner. Now, I've had the pleasure of going to the Snitzer Concert Hall on, on Broadway and hearing this group. And I gotta be honest with you, I think the average person listening, there's very little difference between these youngsters and the big kids, shall we say. Their music is amazing, David, amazing. Well, thank you. The goal of the organization was to closely replicate a professional orchestra in performance. And the, the original conductor, who was a Russian immigrant named Gershkovich, created the rehearsal process by which we're able to achieve that. And it still continues to this day, 95 years later. Wow. How do you go about selecting and training your young musicians? Well, we have an audition process by which they apply and come and play for the three conductors, conductors on the faculty. And then we place them in one of our four ensembles. And as they improve and grow up, they move to the larger groups and eventually to the Portland Youth Philharmonic itself. By the time they get to this top orchestra, they're usually quite accomplished because we have quite a rigorous process of preparing them. And we're talking middle school and high school age students, is that right? Generally speaking, we have a few musicians younger than that in our youngest groups, and we do have some college students as well in the Philharmonic Orchestra. Give us a sense of time spent each week on honing their craft. Each musician in the Portland Youth Philharmonic rehearses with me for about five hours a week. Uh, sometimes they come twice. Each one has two rehearsals. And then uh, everything that we cover in rehearsals, then homework in between. So they're expected to prepare at home for sometimes multiple hours a day. Well, the music is so accomplished. Uh, and I'm wondering, do you see a fair percentage of kids actually go on college scholarships or decide to make music their careers? A certain percentage, somewhere between 15 and 25% in any given year that graduate will go on to attempt a music major. But most of them are majoring in heavy academic sciences, maths, and things like that. Because one of the stereotypes is musicians are smart. Yeah. And, it, and it still holds <laughs> to this day, yeah. You know, one of the reasons you came by today is you have sort of a mixtape offer coming out this week. Tell us about it. Well. One of the things about being 95 years old is having a tremendous archive of recorded performances. And for the people who are just discovering the orchestra who would like to hear some of the performances from the past, if they'll just go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter, our email newsletter, they will get this free mixtape, which uh, contains symphonies by Beethoven and Tchaikovsky and a little John Philip Sousa to boot. John Philip Sousa! Yes, give us that. that website so folks can <laughs> go there. That's portlandyouthphil.org. PortlandYouthPhil.org, and we want to introduce yeah. our young musicians. We have Peter Bocci, Hanami Froom, Allison Thomas, and Elvin Choi. And uh, David, what are you going to? What are they going to play for us I today? I believe they'll be playing a little bit of a string quartet by Brahms today. Rod would be able to identify that, correct, Rod? Only if there was a trombone player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much for coming in today, members of the Portland Youth Philharmonic. We'll let you take it away. <laughs> 